Now, the big question is, uh, what do we do with Tima here? Alright, we are here today checking out the full release of a little banger by the name of Grift Lands. A very peculiar game that feels like the love child of a roguelike deck builder and Mass Effect. And to me, it's what really helps it stand out. At this point, I have what a lot would define as the deck builder burnout. But the way Grift Lands approaches the recipe feels like an adventure rather than just another battle with RNG. Now that being said, I would like to thank Clay Entertainment for supporting the channel by sponsoring this video. If you're familiar with the channel, you probably know them from my videos on Don't Starve, Invisible Link, and Oxygen Not Included, so they really have a good track record of quality products. But, as you guys are also aware by now, all my sponsored content like any other video on my channel, I'm just here to play a game, have a bit of fun, hopefully entertain you guys along the way. None of my opinions should ever influence your decision one way or the other. However, if you do enjoy what you see here today, I will have a link for you in the description where you can pick this up. It is now the full release, currently available on Steam. Let's go. Alright, so let's get to it here. As you can probably imagine, we're going to have a bunch of characters to unlock as we progress over time as well. Right now we have Sal, Eek, Derig, the Bounty Hunter, the default character. The more progress limit with Sal, we'll unlock this individual and this one as well. But what's kind of cool about the entire recipe behind Grifflin, as I mentioned, is that we're going to be able to see these characters through the perspective of Sal, but then once we unlock them, we'll be able to see their point of view as to how they got to the point where we saw them in a current or at least a past storyline as well. So it's really cool how everything winds up connecting, and that's what I mentioned about the game not only being a deck builder roguelike, but also having really big story and adventure emphasis to it as well. You're a bounty hunter. You escaped a life of indentured labor by hunting criminals and debt dodgers. The work has earned you your freedom, if not any friends. Now, you're back home, for the first time in 10 years. But freedom comes with its own dangers, and making a living in Haveria won't be easy. Here, the gangs are feral, the law enforcement are corrupt, and the people are treated like chattel, indebted to merciless criminals. Criminals like Cassio, the ruthless debt broker who sold you to the Derricks in the first place. But now, Cassio's grip has weakened, and there's a bounty on her head too rich to ignore. You'll die before you go into debt again, and so will she, if you have your say. Your first stop is a dive called the Grog and Dog, where an old friend will help you get your revenge provided you can prove yourself. Okay, so just a bit of a heads up, I had to reset my profile in order for you guys to get that little introduction at the start right there, which gives us a bit of background in terms of the Sal character. So here we are at the Grog and Dog, which smells like stale hops and dried blood. And what I mentioned about the characters and the environments, it kind of has that Mass Effect Star Wars type of feel where it feels like you're kind of like, you know, an adventurous place as opposed to just jumping from one node to another node to get engaged in like, you know, deck building, roguelike combat. Well, look what the tide wrecked up. Shh, by the holy brine, I tear up if I I tear up if I wasn't dead inside. One thing to note as well, you could actually click on anything that's blue to get an idea about characters, locations, items, certain terminology which you will not understand. This will give you lore background. So again, there's a lot of story into this game too. It's damn good to see you looking well. You have a plan to get on your feet? I do. That bounty and Casio, how do we forget it? You might have well grown up strong, but you ain't that strong. But that's not going to stop you from trying, is it? If you want a chance of surviving this, you better make yourself some friends fast. I can help you with that. I knew I could count on you, shish. So, let's see. We have negotiation, we have battle, and we have negotiation. Not every single thing that you do in this game has to wind up in combat and killing. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. But, let's start off with some battle, why not? And we do have a random combat here, or a random event in general right now. You were approached by a member of the cult. The fire of conviction burning brightly in her eyes. You! You have rejected the indifference of the mighty Hesh. You must pay for your impudence. Drop the name of a friendly cult member. So, had we already known a cult member, we could essentially get out of the situation right now. But again, we have no friends because nobody likes us from the cults. So again, 
things that you say could have an impact down the line. Defend ourselves. Um, this seems like a really, really tough fight right now early on, especially with that backup right there. We could also pay. Or we could try to convince Pow you are fateful to Hesh. Which seems like the better choice here. So instead of doing a battle first, we'll start off a negotiation. Rejected Hesh? Me? I am shocked. Shocked that you would make such a claim. Now it's up to us to convince them that we are not a uh, dirty heathen. We believe in the Hesh. That's good. So essentially, we don't know what their intent is going to be. But what we want to do is bring this down to a zero. This will get us the win right here. We have 30 and we have one composure to start off with. Um, so right now, because we don't know what the intents are going to be, this will happen one turn and one turn. So the next turn, we'll find out what those are. For now, the best thing we can do because we don't have to block any attacks is just fast talk as much as possible. And we landed a two there. Landed a two again. And a two. Now you have awoken the prayer of Hesh, which if I believe adds one resolve and shield to a friendly argument at the start of Pal's turn. So this is a really good buff for them to have. I've had it before when I've had some of the cultist members in my teams before. And over here we have the Wrath of Hesh, target all opponents arguments each turn, one or two damage. So this will be a continuous thing we might want to knock out. I'm going to go with influence. And... Drop it on now. And now we have influence right here. All diplomacy cards deal maximum damage. So remember that one of three or one of four thing? Now we'll get that four and three all the time. However, they're going to get their buff from that one. Which is fine. And you also got... Hmm. It's being shielded. It cannot be attacked. So this has to go right now. And what you're coming after is one of two. So we could ideally right now... Add composure ourselves to make sure we don't take any damage. I don't really care too much if that goes down right now. So let's definitely make sure we are fine. And all diplomacy cards deal maximum damage. So that means that right now we can knock this out. Or even this attack if we wanted to. But let's get this out of the way. And now this is to a five. Attacking both of us. Again, I'll eat it. It's not really too big of a deal. We'll take the three on that one. And in our turn. So we blocked it. That one went down, but it's perfectly fine. I expected as much. And they got nothing else on the field that doesn't attack us. So now we could just go straight up into attack mode ourselves. Knock it out there. And we won without taking any single damage whatsoever. So let's pick this up here. And I'm going to go with build report though, because I've downed that one before. I have misjudged you, sister. May Hesh's rat fall upon your enemies before it falls upon you. <laughs> Big follower of the hash. Okay, so now how about we check out this um, last cool quest here. And see about getting into our first bit of combat. For instance, if I want to fight Lasko right now, by talking to these individuals here, we could find out if they'll back Lasko up in combat. Or sometimes we'd also pay them off and be like, hey, look the other way, I'm about to kill this person. What the hell did you just say? You post a bounty? Sakikasa. Yeah, well, didn't expect to actually get any interest. Yeah, well, I'm a hunter, it's my job. You put up a posting, I respond to it. We talk pay. Right, right, of course, yeah. I need you to take down Drabin. He's a dead dodger. Drabin. He's a rise pamphleteer. Dead or alive, whatever is easier. But, um, you need to show me proof. Else, it's no deal, right? Don't want you claiming credit for someone else's work. Someone else? Has another hunter already taken his bounty? Maybe? Uh, they didn't say they were a hunter, but... That's fine, right? Two folks can go after the same bounty at once. And here we go. Now, I've said it once. I don't much like the idea of repeating myself. Where is Drabid? And I've said it a dozen times. Shove off! It's clear Timo won't get anywhere with Melba at this rate. Mm, this looks like quite the impasse you've reached. Maybe take a breather, jog around the block. Yeah? And who might you be? A hunter, same as you. Though I gotta say, it doesn't look you're doing too well. The patrons sensing trouble bury their heads in their noodles. Tima watches you with a screwed eye, keeping her distance at the time being. Well, it does seem that Melba might know about the whereabouts. We could beat it out of Melba. <laughs> Now, there's probably different ways we could have done this. We could have probably talked to another patron at the bar and maybe gotten them to put in a good word with Melba for us, etc., etc. But again, 
Where's the fun in not being able to show you the combat too, right? So we have to beat up Melba for information over here. Melba, 50 HP. Promoted laborer Melba will panic after receiving 35 more damage. Now, mind you, we don't necessarily have to kill. We could beat up. At 35, they will panic. And when they panic, we could allow them to flee. Or we could, you know, finish out the job if we want to. So, let's see, right now, there is your apparently applying a status effect the next time around. So at this point, we are free to just stab away. We also have Fight Dirty. Improvise a card from a pool of special cards. Hmm. Maybe at the end. For now, let's do a stab first. We got a three. Not bad. And since we're going to do the combination last, let's just do the Fight Dirty. Gain one power, expend, apply two bleed, and draw two cards. You know what? I'm always a big fan of laying up those status effects in there, so we got some bleed in there. And some combination, which will give us some combos now as well. We are done. You're gathering up. Now 25 more damage and they will panic. So, let's see, you have 8 defense now. Gain 1 power at the start of battle. Attack damage is increased by 3 for 3 turns. And 1 more bleed foam return from us. Okay. Insert hammer grip or saber grip into your hand deals two bonus damage if you have any combo which we do so right now we can definitely take advantage of that um hammer grip so let's bring it up perfect now are they attacking us yes they're going after nine so we could apply some defense and we might as well just lower that to some degree and we'll finish up here with hopefully a good stab we got four in that one Okay, we took five damage. Next up, what do we got here? We're looking at 10 damage next time around, but our hammer grip is back. We still have some combinations, so that'll definitely help us out. Can we combo up even more? Not particularly. However, this will be a free attack, and mind you, we don't have to take damage, so we could just skip out on using this, and we could stack up defenses right now, and basically take no attack. That's fine. At this point, six. And one more. So, now as I've mentioned, we have the option here. Kill him or not. Theoretically speaking, we got nothing really to gain from killing him. So, we'll accept the surrender. But, I could've. Let's see here. Apply for bleed, you know it. You know that's what I'm in for. Now, about Drabbit. Uh, Drabbit's in the sheltered cave. You win, alright? But... You better actually bring him in, because I don't want the fallout from this. As you notice, Timo was off to the side, watching you duke it out. Seems awful suspicious she's nowhere to be seen now. Okay, so out here, Grog and Dog, we are going over to the sheltered cave, which, more than likely, won't be surprised if we run into Tima there right now. You find the cave where Melba said it would be. You rap once on the door and Drabbit emerges like a wary you. Who are you? Who sent you? Convince Drabbit to come along peacefully, or we can just straight up attack him right now as well. Intimidation. This is an intimidation attempt. He will dislike us. Either way, whichever one we do. So who shes? Let's try to convince him to just come along so no go peacefully. Kiyabu? Okay, so, let's see here. You have called a rise at the start of each turn. A random card in the hand will cost one extra action, which you can see that right here. Our deflection normally costs one, it costs two because of this right there. So if we wanted to use that for defensive, we really technically can't. So I say we put this up so we avoid that. And then I'll take that attack over there because we have it blocked off. And let's go ahead and start attacking you a bit there. And these are the intimidate cards we picked up here. We cannot use those. They will be just chilling there in our card for a bit. So now those cards that we had have been added to his circle here. But as you can see, the hostility cards deal an additional four damage. We have hostility cards of ourselves, which happens to be threatened. So this went from a one to a four to a 5 to an 8, so that's helping us out quite a bit. And fast talking. And this should just be about it for our boy. Assuming this one lands... Oh, the 2! Drabbit hates us. You've incurred his fury and will likely face the consequences. Reason? Well, you, could, you took him captive. People don't normally like when you arrest him. Slander. When you murder a member of the Rise, lose 2 max resolve. So now we have Bane because this guy hates us, so... Then let's go ahead and turn Drabbit over. Now, Tima. Tima. You know from experience that there's a twist in the air. You're being followed. 
You can just come out now, Tima. Ah, thanks for the elbow grease, Sal. I was fresh out. I'll be taking them now. <laughs> you got some nerve. So I'm gonna have to beat you down in Fortune's Void. What do you got here? Prevents attack damage for this turn. Mm, at the end of Tima's turn, apply five defense to all allies. Not a bad one to have. 30 damage and you will panic afterwards. <laughs> okay. Right now you're, I guess, setting that up. So I guess we start off with setting up some combos for sure because that's gonna help us stack up some damage after a while. And apply bleed. Absolutely. And then we'll do a 2 to 5 with that stabby. And we got the fiver. And some bleed. 21's already been applied. Down to 19. And it goes at 5 defense, right? Yes. Otherwise, 7 attack coming my way. We could apply a 4 right now. Which we will just lower that a little bit. We could also fight dirty. And by doing that, let's see. Draw two random cards, maybe get another defense so we could fend off the attack. There it is. We have now fend off that attack. And we're also... Oh, that was for two, though. Ah, oh, I was going to play more bleed. Well, at least we took no damage right now, which is fine. And you are not attacking next turn, which is good. So now, let's go back to what I was trying to do. The more bleed you're saying, I don't see a reason why we should not do that. And then we follow that up with a stab. And that's going to be down to three after that six bleed right there. Now... The big question is, uh, what do we do with Tima here? So, is it in our best interest to give Tima the same benefit of the doubt? Not exactly. It's time to end that ass, Tima. Uh-oh. Dano hates you. You've incurred her fury and will likely face the consequences. Killed her friend, Tima. Lowered rank. Allies have 10% less max HP. In battle. That's actually sounds like a really bad one to have. <laughs> oh well. Sakikasa. Ah, I see you have Drebid with you. Good. Thank you. Excellent. This is Holman. Eat me pig. Kukelson. Charming. Thanks for your service. Here's your pay. And our very first quest has now been completed. Get a little bonus as well. And Lasko likes us. So you know we might have a couple of people who hate us, but at least Lasko likes us. That being said, how about we wrap it up here for this one today? Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And it showed you as well how the combat plays out, both the violence and the negotiation. How obviously both of them have an upside and a downside to them. What I would like to do is come back for at least one more video to kind of wrap up the two quests that we have remaining in order to jump into the main storyline bounty hunting quest. So maybe we'll do one more to follow this one up with. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Information down below will have the links in case you want to pick this up for yourselves. It is available now as the full release. I'll catch you next time.